she used to enjoy is gone. Um, and, uh, and we're basically just staying in the apartment. Um, after she had that slump to the floor, I won't even call it a fall because she really didn't fall. She was, I was holding her in my arms when she went down, but I contacted hospice immediately and uh, and had them come to evaluate her and they immediately realized that uh, that we need some help they brought in a, a bed for her a hospital bed for her to sleep on they brought in a commode for her and we started uh, having a nurse come and and uh, and nurses assistants come and chaplains and we we just had uh, today today we had what do we have today first the nurses assistant came then the nurse came, uh, then the, uh, the um, social worker came and visited us. And in the meantime, we also met the new doctor that's been put on her case. So <laughs> today was a hospice day. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of activity. Yeah, and, uh, and, and then about a week and a half ago, uh, well, actually, all right, so when once hospice started, the other thing I said to myself was, you know, I need somebody to come at night to help her get to bed. Okay. And so I hired people, I hired people to come from 6 to 10 and put her to bed around 9.30 every night. And that's, that was working out really nicely until last week. And last week, the woman who had taken care of my mother for about 10 years, who I knew quite well and, and really had a good relationship with, and Candy knew also. And then when my mother died, we got her the job from my aunt who lived down here. And so she worked with her for about a year before she died. And then she went on to find somebody else who I helped her uh, by giving her a, a, a glowing uh, letter of recommendation. So she's been in touch with us all this time. She called about a week and a half ago to say that the person that she was um, in charge of just died. And I put two and two together after a few days of thinking about it. And I said, listen, if I'm gonna hire people or I don't know to do it, why don't I hire Surette? That's her name. And uh, I called Surette last week and she started Thursday. And it's been wonderful having someone who, uh, who knows us, who, uh, who loves us, um, taking care of Candy and me. So, so it's, it's been a beautiful shift. <laughs> yeah. That, 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 and your calling in the midst of this is just so perfect. It's so perfectly timed, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, let me ask you, Harvey, um, you talked about a, a time when she slumped over. Now, what exactly happened? I just think that she uh, just became weak in the knees and and was no longer able to hold herself up as she had been doing uh, for quite a while, uh, even though she was uh, confined to the wheelchair for uh, over a year. When mm -hmm. I could get her out of the wheelchair, all I'd have to do is kind of, people used to watch us and they'd say, oh, it's like dancing. I said, yeah, it's mm -hmm. like dancing. I would hold my arms out and she would hold my arms and we would dance. From, uh, from the wheelchair into the bathroom, uh, if we had to do that, or uh, from the bed in, into the living room to get onto the couch. But, but she was mobile. She was able to do that part of it, not without my assistance because she has very poor balance, but with my assistance, she could do it. All of a sudden, she couldn't do that even. Uh-oh, Harvey, are you there? I'm here. Okay, I, I think I just cut, something cut out for just a second. Um, so, okay, so let me just say the last thing I heard was when um, you said that she was mobile with your help, you know, that you guys could move around together. Right, and then, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden that was gone. I see. And, and, and I knew it was gone. It wasn't, it wasn't like, you know, tomorrow it's going to be all right. 
it was very yeah. clear because first of all, it took me. Uh, well, I actually called senior helpers here, and they came and uh, and. Um, no, did I call senior helpers? No, I did not call senior helpers. I finally was able to get her up after a great deal of, uh, of time tra- trying to get her up and onto the bed. And then I called senior helpers. The following day, she didn't get out of bed all day, 24 hours. And that's when I called the uh, uh, hospice and said, you know, she's not, she's not getting out of, uh, out of bed. She's not communicating at all. She's just lying there. I said, there's something going on. So they came and they evaluated her and they decided to put her into hospice. Okay. Okay. And, um, uh, Harvey, is this through Medicare? Um, all I know is I'm not paying for it. So <laughs> I guess, I guess it's, it's something, it's something, it's either Medicare or they, or, or the, uh, or the hospice has a grant. I don't okay. know how it works. Uh, let me see. I have I have the booklet here. <clears throat> okay, the, the company called Vitas. Okay. Um, Healthcare Corporation. Um, I, I don't see any anything that tells me uh, how to how they do this. Huh. Do government agencies, businesses to notify of the death. No, that's not what I'm looking for. Being there, I I don't know. I I I never even asked. I just knew I just knew that it's a service that uh, that if they um. If they decide that it's appropriate, uh, they put you into it. Okay. Um, I, I've never I've never been contacted by Medicare to say anything about it, so I don't know. It's a very interesting question. I, I I have a feeling that they probably operate off of some kind of grant or something. Okay. But I don't. Know. That's okay. Right I'll, check the, I'll check the web. I'll check the website after you. you uh, sure. You um, piqued my curiosity. Yeah. <laughs> now, so I understand that you've had kind of a major shift. That the shift to hospice was in June. Is that right? Yeah, about June. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so prior to that, you were. You were doing your care routine. You were just doing Full time. what you were doing. Full okay. time. Yes. Um, and what did that look like in the context of the pandemic? Was it just that you just stayed home? Um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Actually, what happened was on March 13th, <laughs> on my, March 13th, Candy and I were with a bunch of, uh, of uh, fellow residents here playing a game. Actually, I, I was the one who played. She never played games. She never, she never was into games at all. But I was there playing a game. And uh, about six days later, they closed down the entire uh, community from, uh, from going for, for uh, meals closing down the dining room, closing down the theater, closing down uh, all of the activity uh, spaces. And then I found out that one of the people who was uh, was at that game had COVID. Oh, my. And was being, and was being treated in, in their apartment. Actually, it was a husband and wife. He, origi- he had it, and then he passed it on to his wife. So the two of them were in the apartment. I found out, thank God, and uh, and because I had been moving around the community myself with Candy from between the 13th and the 19th, and uh, I discovered that. Oh yeah, the, um, what would that have been? March, March 13th. So when St. Patrick's Day is when? 
think it's like the second. Mark, 